All right, you guys, this is my 2017 Lincoln MKZ. What's different and special about this one, this is the actual hybrid. Still comes with a 2.0 four cylinder in it, but today I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil in it and show you how I do that. So I know, as you look at this car, it is a, it's a baby. It's a baby between a Jaguar and an Audi. And this is what it, they came up with. And it's unusual I would buy a Ford, but I love this Lincoln. This Lincoln is an amazing car, getting 42 miles a gallon. It's perfect for Uber and Lyft service. Uh, it's just a great daily. So before we go ahead and jack up the car, I'll show you guys the capacity on the oil um, in your manual. It's, uh, I, th I believe, 4.8 quarts. So here's the inside of the old, the old stinking Lincoln. I love, I love my Lincoln. So let's pull out the owner's manual here and go to the capacity section. So we're gonna go in here, table of contents, uh, capacity and specifications, page 358. And if you look here, uh, they call for motorcraft, but I, I always use Castrol, full synthetic, uh, zero 20 weight. And the capacity with an oil filter, it says right here, engine oil with filters is 4.5 quarts. I don't know why I said 4.8, it's 4.5. So it's four and a half quarts. So let's go ahead and uh, let's jack up uh, the Lincoln and let's get started. All right, once you go ahead and get the car jacked up off the ground, you're gonna to wanna to get under here and take the under tray off. And this under tray, right under here, it has just 10 millimeter bolts, just like this. You're gonna take, so I was looking in the manual where the exact jack points are on the Lincoln. It didn't really show it in there. So I'll just tell you guys what I did because I've been jacking cars for a while. So like right here is where I jacked it up. Um, it, it was too hard to get to the, uh, the, what's this thing called? I forget all of a sudden. Either way, usually you jack on this right here, but the, my jack was hitting the uh, lower side skirt. So I just put it right here and then I put my jack stand just like this. You guys can see it. And make sure it didn't go in that hole right there. And then you, you should be fine to go ahead and get started. So this is a consistent product I've used in all my cars, Prius, my uh, 2005 Infiniti. Uh, Kane and oil filter and uh, Castor Wedge after doing an oil analysis test. This is the best oil you can buy So let's go ahead on the stinking Lincoln Let's pop that uh that hood. Yeah, check out them floor mats That's that's good stuff right there. Where's the hood watch? Here it is So the engine's dirty. I don't have a chance to clean it yet. I just picked this car up from Michigan So I, I live in Arizona, so I had to fly all the way to Michigan to get this because I picked it up this is a 2017 with 100,000 miles on it, which is nothing for a hybrid. There we go. So, okay, I haven't even got the plastic taken off this yet. So, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get the oil pan underneath and uh, get the uh, cover off, and we can go ahead and get started changing the oil. You can see the oil filter is really easy to access. So when I bought the car, I checked the dipstick to make sure the color of the oil was light. So you can see here, he even dated that they changed it. But I put 4,000 miles on this car already because I drove it 2,000 miles from Michigan to Arizona. And then I took a week long trip with my dad for his 80th birthday in California and put another 2,000 miles driving up and coast. So I put 4,000 miles on it in less than a month. But I mean, this is why I, this is why I moved out of the Midwest for this exact reason. Look at this. Look what it does to steel. So it's not good for humans either, but I'm gonna waste a bunch of time under here cleaning all this Salt residue off of it. That's left behind from from every winter. This car's a 2017 It's really technically two years old even though it's three with it being 2020 But this is what living in a place that has winters does to a car like look at this This car is less than two years old. It's got sand like residue from salt all over it um, All none of my cars look like this underneath like I, look at this, it even looks old. So right here is a drain plug. You're gonna need a 15 millimeter socket. Go ahead and take this off. So let's get back to business and let's go ahead and get the oil drained on this. As simple as that. So I didn't take the cap off the top of the engine, which would let it like breathe better, they said, but it doesn't really matter. Take the cap off the engine right now. 
see if you see that one. Jesus Christ, look at that. That's an easy filter to get to, that's for sure. But it makes a freaking mess not being in there sideways, being upside down. All right, let that drain till you feel comfortable. And then uh, here's the k oil filter that I would take is an HP 1002. Just like any oil filter, you're gonna take it and then this little, uh, this ring right around here, make sure uh, some oil and lubes on it. So I just usually take it and just go like this. And right, that'll get it all nice and lubed up for you. And then all you're gonna do, screw it back on here. See, the nice thing about the K&N ones is it has a nut on the bottom of it, so you don't need an oil wrench to go ahead and get it off if it gets on there too tight. But K&N, I don't know. I know these oil filters are expensive, but I keep my cars for a long time and I've never had issues. So I just, you know, drop a couple extra bucks. It's like, it's just peace of mind because I know these filters are good. And then you just screw it on here basically as tight as you can get it with your hands really and that's all you need maybe a three quarters turn after it's real snug that's it there's no need to get it on there super tight and, and then that's it you go ahead and put your drain plug back in torque it down it should be like 20 foot pounds but you just torque it by hand i've been doing this long enough i can feel it and then we'll go ahead and stick some oil in it i guess i decided you know usually i just get a finger tight I took the 27 socket and just gave it half a half a turn after I got it finger tight and that'll be plenty enough. Usually you're gonna go as tight as you can with your hands. I've never had issues, but since this one was on there so tight, I figured obviously they used a wrench to tighten it half a turn as, after they did it as tight as they could with their hands. So I went ahead and did the same. It ain't gonna hurt it being that tight. Plus I have this nut on the K&N, which makes it easy to get off next time. All right, now once you go ahead and you have the oil filter installed and the drain pod back installed, we're gonna go ahead and put oil in it. So, go ahead and let's grab the oil here. So on this, it says 4.5 quarts. So you're gonna wanna take this down till there's 0.5 left. So you don't wanna use the full five quarts here. Let's go ahead and uh, fill her up. All right, what? I already pre-busted the cap on this prior. You don't want to overfill it, so it's always better to check it every once in a while and just see where we're at. So put it back on the ground. <laughs> I know there's plenty, but I'm just illustrating. So looks like we've got two and a half left. Man, tell you what, I'm glad Audi and Jaguar had a baby because this Lincoln is. Mm -mm. See where we're at now. Damn, look at that. Look at that skill. Got one quart left. So you got about half to go. Huh? Just a wee little bit more. And a little OCD, so just a tad more. There we go. Then that's exactly uh, full. So always you can validate. You let the car sit for a couple hours and pull the dipstick and see what it reads. And if it needs a little bit more, it needs a little bit more. So that'll do it on the, uh, the stinking Lincoln.
It's a 2017 hybrid four cylinder turd. Um, that's how you change the oil in it. So I hope this video helps you guys. And uh, yeah, see you next one.